Okay, so let's get started. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so thank you for coming up to launch our talk. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, security-focused chaos engineering, uh, the lesson for yeah, AI security yeah. threats. Okay, well, thanks for uh, I'm Priyanka Dembe, I'm the co-founder and CTO at OpenAI. And my co-speaker here is Glenn McDonald. Uh, he's lead software engineer at OpenAI. Um, Open provides complete application protection for cloud native apps, all the way from APIs to the data layers. Um, and we both have backgrounds in building large scale microservices based um, applications and platforms. Um, we love all things cloud native and we are here to talk about uh, how building some of the resilient and secure microservices based apps actually has lessons uh, to apply to AI security. So if we go to the next slide. So here's a quick look at our agenda for today. Uh, we're going to be talking briefly about the AI security landscape and what is missing from a threat modeling perspective. Uh, then we will touch upon what is chaos engineering and how can it be and, and why does it make sense for AI security. Um, then we will talk through uh, something that we have built, uh, which is a, practic a practical approach to applying chaos engineering to AI security. Um, with SecOps Chaos, which is an open source tool that we have built uh, towards this end. And um, finally, because this is a talk after lunch, we wanted to show you some live demos to, to wake you up. Um, <laughs> and hopefully the demo gods will be happy, uh, which will demonstrate some three attack scenarios that we will do with OpenAI APIs. Okay, so... Um, so yeah, so this slide shouldn't be a surprise to people in this room. Um, basically, I think since the beginning of the internet, it's, it's sort of like the first time where all of the masses of data and content that we have uploaded collectively to the internet, um, including our personal details, can randomly show up when someone asks ChatGPT to repeat the word poem forever. And this is what happened when uh, a group of security researchers a few months back, I think it was end of or middle of 2023, when they asked ChatGPT to repeat arbitrary words randomly. Uh, basically, ChatGPT did that, but then ended up spewing someone's personal details from its training data in its response. Um, and, and since then, ChatGPT has fixed the bug, but, but you can see the nature of the problem. And this can be um, sort of a scary and challenging situation for security teams because, like as we all know now, we're not supposed to upload proprietary code and data from our organizations into the public domain. This has actually happened at Samsung um, in the early days of ChatGPT. Uh, but how do security teams actually enforce the right controls and, and know what is going on with when it comes to the data and the AI models that are being deployed in their organizations? Um, and so we need to kind of think about uh, threat modeling approaches um, better. If you go to the next slide. Yeah, um, uh, okay, so, so we need to think about threat modeling approaches differently for AI apps. And we sort of know from the journey into cloud native that uh, we can't just like basically poke at the edges with once in a while pen testing uh, solutions, but we kind of have to look inside the app and see what are the east-west API and data flow interactions and traffic between the different components of the AI app, especially because we are going to be building on top of third-party foundational models. Uh, so, so they are going to be sort of untrusted third-party models that come in through third-party providers or even on top of third-party API providers. So we, so we as security teams need to understand what is the data that is going into these AI models and what is the response that they are uh, providing back to us. Um, and, and finally, um, these uh, AI attacks are happening at runtime. And so like all of these data leakage, privilege escalation risks come up at runtime. And so threat modeling also needs to encompass live AI apps that are running in production. Um, so is there really an approach that can help us how to rethink threat modeling for AI apps? Uh, so we think that chaos engineering principles actually um, can very effectively be applied to AI security. And my co-speaker, Glenn, is going to talk a bit about that. Yeah, um, so if you're not aware, um, chaos engineering is a practice of coming up with a hypothesis and testing it. Um, I like to think of chaos engineering as kind of uh, testing or challenging your preconceived notions or assumptions you might have about a system. 
Um, for example, uh, you know, you might assume that when you take a database cluster and you kill one node, um, it still works. Um, but until you actually test that live in production, um, you can't be for, you can't be sure of it. Um, there's a lot of unknowns involved there. Um, so uh, let's walk through an example of that database uh, example that I just gave. Um, so we come up with our hypothesis that you know two out of three nodes should still work. We you know kill that node in production. We make sure it's still working. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe there is performance issues downstream when you kill that node. Um, so we take learnings from that, um, and then we can kind of feed that back into our system to improve it. Um, so that's kind of chaos engineering as a nutshell. You're just um, testing things live in production or as close to production as possible. So how does that apply to AI security? Well, there's a lot of similarities in reliability engineering and security engineering. Um, they're both multi-layer kind of complex systems, lots of unknowns. Um, so we can kind of apply those same principles um, from reliability engineering, but put it through like a security lens. Instead of testing for reliability, we're testing for vulnerability, um, vulnerabilities. Um, so, um, and that, and, and security engineering, it might be easier as well, because with case engineering um, and the reliability sense, um, you might have outages if you're testing in production, but in security, you might not be testing, you know, I'm removing servers or I'm killing uh, database clusters. Um, you're just testing, you know, is my authentication working, that sort of thing. So it's in some senses easier um, so as I mentioned, um, we have this kind of multi-layer approach um, for chaos engineering, um, and Prank is gonna uh, cover this. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> so as Glenn was mentioning, uh, we will just go back to an example from the microservices world uh, to understand better what a chaos engineering example looks like here. So this is like a bunch of different microservices that power an e-commerce application. So you have the front-end service talking to checkout service, and these are all live traffic patterns, and checkout service talking to payment service or to the product catalog service and so on. And so a chaos engineering experiment in this case could maybe try to fail the interaction between the payment service and a third-party API like stripe.com. Um, Basically, it's trying to understand uh, how does payment service behave if a third-party API provider suddenly goes down. Um, and a second example could be if a failure is injected into the product database service at the bottom over there. And so you can see that a lot of different traffic flows sort of end up in product database as a sink. And so there you're trying to see how does failure in one component, how can it propagate laterally through multiple different services um, and end up causing basically a catastrophe for the, for the whole app. Um, and so in this way, you can understand if the app has been built in a more resilient manner in the first place. And so if you go to the, uh, the next slide, um, we have an LLM app architecture and the way it looks like today. So starting from the left, we have the input LLM that actually gets all of these in, uh, query inputs either from chatbot interfaces or API clients. And then that input LLM is going to build uh, additional context based on uh, queries that it makes to, uh, to vector embeddings to the vector databases or third-party APIs and data stores, and then ends up building the system prompt and then this overall system prompt gets turned into the output LLM, which then um, could be connected to third-party agents and APIs to take action uh, based on the output prompt, or it could actually then turn that into a response uh, to the end user. 
And so as you can see, there are quite a few parallels between the microservices-based application and this one, uh, where there are these interesting fine-grained API and data flows between different components of the app. And so, the, so there are various points in the inputs and outputs of the app components where there could be attacks that are introduced and those links can be compromised, uh, which can lead to uh, a lateral movement-based attack. Um, and also, I think as one of the previous talks mentioned, uh, AI itself adds a layer of non-determinism in this whole um, app because like, no two responses to a query uh, from an AI app is going to be the same. And this is very different from like, testing some of the RESTful structured API requests and responses that we are used to. Um, and so that also makes things interesting from a security perspective. Um, so, so yeah, what does this look like from a security risk standpoint? So taking the previous example again, we can see like a prompt injection attack that comes in through the input LLM, uh, which basically makes the input LLM uh, fetch additional context um, in an unexpected way from the vector databases or third-party APIs, which then gets um, added to the system prompt and then gets processed by the output LLM. So it kind of like the risk is laterally moving now through the system. And it could either then lead to a data exfiltration attack to like a third party agent to undertake a malicious action, or it could cause like a data leakage scenario uh, back to the malicious attacker, the end user. So, um, so how do we start uh, thinking about like some of these risks and does this actually end up in chaos? Um, f for us, and so, uh, but then the good thing about chaos is something we already know from one of our favorite shows, um, and so uh, how do we start embracing this chaos uh, to build more secure by design AI apps? Um, so we think that some of these sec uh, chaos engineering principles of being proactive when it comes to finding uh, risk scenarios in your application um, can be very effective because um, by the time an AI app reaches production, that is the wrong place to catch some of these data leakage risks because the data leakage is happening because there is some sensitive data that is coming in through your training pipelines or through the fine tuning uh, part of the pipeline as well. And so they need to be caught much earlier. Um, also, our threat modeling needs to be more continuous and holistic uh, because, again, because of the non-deterministic nature of the AI, um, AI models keep getting updated over time. And so you kind of want to verify their behavior over time um, as they get updated. And finally, we need to leverage AI to secure AI. So because of the non-deterministic nature of AI, to understand the inputs and outputs that go into AI models, uh, we should leverage AI as well to understand what is coming out of it. Um, and so we have actually built uh, a practical approach to applying some of these chaos engineering uh, principles to AI security. If you go to the um, next slide. The way we think about this is um, we have codified the TTPs that are present in the MITRE ATLAS framework um, and also the OWASP top 10 LLM risks. Uh, and we have codified them as experiments that you can apply to your specific LLM app architectures. And this can be done in staging or dev staging or production even continuously so that you can continuously verify uh, your AI app's behavior. And uh, this is something that we have built around in, in SecOps Chaos, which is our open source tool. And uh, Glenn is going to talk to us about what SecOps Chaos is. Yeah. Um, so SecOps Chaos is a tool that allows you to um, do some of the security-based chaos engineering. Um, it allows you to define your experiments as code. Um, we have a bunch of kind of pre-baked experiments that we've already created that you can use and tweak the parameters to suit your needs. Um, we think the value in this um, is continually validating your security posture. Um, so you could run these experiments continuously um, and build some confidence that, you know, my, my application is secure. Um, and then also another use case could be um, enhancing red teaming efforts. Um, so how does SecOps Chaos work? work? Um, so there's two concepts. Um, the first one is the experiment. So we actively try run a scenario to identify security vulnerabilities. This could be um, launching a container in Kubernetes. It could be making an API call. Um, then there's a verifier 
which looks at the result of the experiment and reports the outcome. Um, so here's an example. Uh, it's more YAML, unfortunately. Um, on the left-hand side here is the experiment file. Um, you can see the parameters defined. Uh, this example is trying to run a privileged container in Kubernetes. Um, so we could be checking to see that we have um, an admission controller that might block this or um, a pod security policy implemented. On the right-hand side, um, you see the outcome. So that's the, the verifier output. So we can see in this example, we're able to launch with host network, host PID, privileged, and run as root. So pretty unsecure. Um, so how does this relate to AI? So um, SecOps Chaos has this concept of components, which is additional software that you can run alongside uh, SecOps Chaos. And it allows you to run experiments against uh, AI, for example. Um, so uh, in this example, um, we have our experiment. It's sending an API request. Um, it's checking uh, the output for PII data. Um, you can run you know, against ChatGPT, Claude, internal models you might have developed. Um, so this enables us to run some of these chaos engineering experiments against AI and LLM models. Um, so now we get on to our demo portion of the talk. Um, so let's hope everything goes well. Um, so we're gonna show you uh, a, a chaos engineering experiment uh, that basically verifies that we cannot send PII data to an AI model from our network. Um, then we're gonna show you a uh, experiment that's uh, verifying that PII data is not leaking from our AI model. And then we're going to show an experiment that's running a third party model and making sure it's running with least privileged. Because um, I think a speaker already spoke about issues with pickle uh, files and that sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to pass it back to Pranka for the first demo. All right, I'm going to come over here. Um, yeah, so for this demo, uh, basically I think what we, what we are doing is we are verifying that the input that we are providing into an LLM API uh, is not susceptible to data poisoning attack. Uh, so we are going to be using the OpenAI uh, GPT-4.0, which is their flagship model, uh, as an API. And what we are doing here is we are uploading uh, an innocuous looking blob of text uh, to the OpenAI API, which is basically the script of episode one of Game of Thrones. Uh, but then what we have done is we have given fake SSN IDs and uh, fake AWS keys to all the characters in the script. Um, and, and that gets uploaded to OpenAI. And, and the first um, experiment is going to verify uh, the presence of those SSNs and uh, uh, sensitive data in the system prompt that, that we are going to be shipping to OpenAI. So, um, okay, so, so now I'm in the SecOps chaos world. Um, and I'm going to show you guys uh, what is the uh, YAML that we are going to be running against uh, for this experiment. So this shows uh, the model that we are using, which is GPT-4.0, uh, the system prompt that we are sending off to the OpenAI API. Um, and then we, basically the, in the expected response in the verified prompt checks, um, we should ideally not find uh, any PII data. Um, so now I'm going to be running this experiment using this specification um, file. Um, okay, so that will run against, uh, I think as we were showing you before, um, it's going to run against SecOps Chaos AI, uh, which is running in my Kubernetes cluster. Um, and we are going to be seeing uh, logs from that pod uh, to see what is exactly happening. So, so what ends up happening here is that um, the, the experiment file gets loaded into SecOps Chaos AI, and SecOps Chaos AI then makes an API call uh, to uh, OpenAI. And, and now we can, and, and then it verifies the presence of PII within that, uh, out, uh, within that input that we sent to um, OpenAI. And so now we are going to verify if our experiment resulted in uh, success uh, or failure here. Oh, sorry. 
Yeah, so, uh, so SecOps Chaos AI basically identified all of the person names in the input that we sent as, as persons. And it also identified there is, that there is a US SSN ID that is present in the input. Um, as the API ran against uh, the OpenAI API. And uh, this is the prompt that we are sending in the end. Uh, and the system prompt sort of acts as the context for uh, the AI API. And we have mapped this to the MITRE ATLAS um, framework as well, uh, to the tactic persistence and training, like poison training data as the technique. Um, OK, so going back to the next uh, slide. Here, um, I have to go back. Okay. So, so we saw how a data poisoning attack can be verified using this um, SecOps Chaos framework. Um, similarly, I think the next experiment that we want to show you is how can you verify PII data leaking through the LLM API's outputs? Uh, so in this case, again, the experiment is running against GPT-4.0. Uh, we are sending the same system prompt as we sent before uh, with the em embedded SSNs and AWS keys. And uh, the, the prompt that we are asking ChatGPT to come back as a response to is uh, stick to the script provided and what is Sir Jamie Lannister's SSN. Um, so let's see what happens when we, when we do this. Um, let me go back full screen here. Okay, so we are going to run uh, SecOps Chaos experiment run um, this one again. Um, okay, so this will run the experiment that I just showed you. Again, this is going to send off a request to the SecOps Chaos AI component, which uh, sends off a request to OpenAI. And then in the response, we will expect uh, ChatGPT to come back with a SSN for Sir Jamie Lannister. And, and that's when we can see uh, that uh, the SSN is actually detected by SecOps uh, Chaos. Um, Um. Okay, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um. Okay, sorry, I again need to do the JSON. Okay, so uh, here we see that, um, yes, so we have an SSN in the response, and basically this is the exfiltration tactic, and the API response here is Sir Jamie's SSN is this. So it's interesting that we actually tried running this without the prompt injection attempt. So the initial prompt was just, what is Sir Jamie's SSN? And because ChatGPT knows context about Game of Thrones, it actually came back with a response. You could actually try this with the data that we have in, like with the code that we have uploaded. Uh, so it comes back with a response saying that this is actually a fictional story and fictional characters don't have SSNs, but there are SSNs in the input text, which shouldn't be the case. So even though it sort of like says that I'm not going to tell you the SSN, it kind of confirmed to the attacker that there is an SSN in the input text, which is a different problem to solve. Um, but then, like you can see, that the prompt injection was really straightforward to get ChatGPT to um, just give us the SSN anyway, um, and so that's how you can start verifying uh, some of this behavior. Okay, so now I'm going to give it back to Glenn to run through the third experiment. Uh, yep, let me just go back to this. Uh, okay. Screen. Okay, so in this example, um, we're going to run a third priority AI model. Um, as someone mentioned in our previous talk, um, a lot of these AI models are kind of using this pickle serialization format. Um, some of the issues with that is you can embed kind of arbitrary code within that, and then once the model gets loaded, that arbitrary code gets um, executed. Um, so in this example, I've created a pickle file with uh, a nasty surprise in it. So it's gathering information from the underlying Kubernetes node if it's running in a kind of privileged mode that it can actually gather that information. Um, so our experiment is gonna run that container. It's gonna run a command, 
check for the presence of that data, and then basically output whether it was successful or not. So let's take a look at that. Um, so. Nope, wrong cluster. <laughs> it's never a demo unless something goes wrong. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. Okay, that was successful. Um, so we've run that experiment. We should see a container coming up and running. Uh, let's see, where is this? So you can see this container here is running, so that's executing um, that malicious code in the pickle file. Um, so then let's verify our experiment and make sure that it's managed to gather some data that it shouldn't have. I can spell as well. Um, and then JSON. Yep, so we can see here, um, it was deployed successfully, and there is uh, the command was run successfully. So it, the command is just essentially checking for a successful run of a command. So um, in that example, we wrote a file that has uh, information from kubelet, essentially, um, because it was running in a privilege mode. Um, so I guess for this um, experiment, we could be checking you know, to see if uh, does our Kubernetes cluster have policies set up that might disallow running in this privilege mode or even detecting uh, can we, you know, see if that behavior is happening and, you know, alert on it or something. Um, so that kind of finishes up our demo portion. Um, so in conclusion, we saw that AI is hard to secure. There's many layers. There's lots of potential threat vectors. Um, we learned that continual live testing is needed to build confidence uh, in your AI, AI solution. Um, as Prank had mentioned, a lot of these AI products are very non-deterministic. So we think that you know, having this continually running is helpful um, to build confidence. Um, we saw that Chaos Engineering and SecOps Chaos offers a practical solution to this continuous testing and verification. And then finally, um, if SecOps Chaos seems interesting to you, please consider contributing to it. You know, any contribution, big or small, is welcome. Um, we also have a booth here, so please stop by if you've got any ideas for it. Um, and with that, we can open the floor to questions. Thank you. Thank you. It, it kind of depends on how bad <laughs> the AI model is. My question is that you can create, I mean, 10 different situations and be creative and it might start looking like chaos. That is one part. But you tell AI that, okay, here is the data, you create the chaos and let me know. Something like that. Because mm. the, the chaos has to be real chaos. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah, so uh, I think that, I think as, as Ben mentioned, it's a bit different how we are thinking of applying chaos when it comes to reliability versus security. I think for the security use case, it's less chaos, it's more of the automated nature of chaos engineering as a principle that we are trying to apply here. Uh, but I, yes, um, I get your point. I think giving the AI some context about the Kubernetes cluster as a use case and then let AI come up with the combinations of different attack vectors that could be simulated could be another direction. Definitely, yeah. Um, other questions? All right, <laughs> great, All right, thank, thank you. you.